Welcome to For Culture, exploring the richness of art and culture in our communities. Presented by For Culture, the King County Cultural Services Agency, dedicated to advancing community through arts, heritage, preservation, and public art. After more than 60 years of preserving the history of the city of Seattle, the Museum of History and Industry is in a new home on the shores of Lake Union. Here's a great opportunity to take a look inside. Come join us. I am so happy, Leonard, to be here at your new home. It's been like about five years ago you were on the banks, sort of, of Lake Washington. Now you've moved to the shores of Lake Union. Brand new home. Brand Last new time home. you visited, five years ago, yeah. we've got a new home, all new experiences, a new location. It's really terrific, Vivian. I, I'm thrilled that you're here. I am blown away by this space and I was saying earlier that it was hard for me to envision what this would look like having been into the old armory so many times, you know, where there are just office spaces around yep. and a big basketball court. It was a big gym, really. So it, it was. So I want to ask you before I get into um, uh, kind of the nitty-gritty of what's here, what was the process like of planning this space? I'm blown away by how well planned the space is. Yeah. So what was that process like? Well, it was a long process to start with, probably seven years of planning. And it wasn't just internal planning. It was really reaching out to the community. And to me, that was the most critical difference. Mm -hmm. We asked ourselves, how can we serve this region? How can we make history be a tool that has relevance to people today. Mm -hmm. And to do that, we started going out and asking our community, asking different uh, organizations, asking people who were history makers themselves, how can we make history really come alive? And then how do we do it within this historic building, this wonderful armory? Uh -huh. So seven years of figuring that out and then making sure that all the artifacts, all the oral histories, all the films that became part of the experience were carefully crafted, were conserved if they needed to be. Uh, many new interactive exhibits have been developed for the museum, all new ways of sharing the history story. So a very complex process, very long, but for the visitor, the result is an experience that is just a lot of fun, a lot of excitement, a lot of discoveries about who we are. Mm -hmm. How long did it take to make the building ready? About two years. Uh, two years of construction, of uh, restoration. It's a LEED certified building, and I'm happy to say it's wow. LEED lead platinum one of only so for people who don't know what lead is tell us what lead is lead means that you are envi environmentally sensitive you're energy efficient you're uh -huh. meeting all the standards of sustainability you're really creating a building for the 21st century that recognizes the importance of the environment and sustainability so buildings that really do that to the highest standard receive a, a certification called lead and the very highest certification is platinum and that's what we've received one of only four museums in the entire country that have uh, achieved that standard it seems like that would be be a huge challenge because this is not a new building. Well, that's right. And we not only are certified as an environmentally sustainable building, we also have national historic preservation status. Wow. So we've received all kinds of uh, preservation acknowledgments and we've worked within those restrictions. So we've had two goals, Vivian. One, to preserve the building as an artifact, mm -hmm. to make sure that its history just is reborn, mm -hmm. and to make it a 21st century building, both for the visitor and for the environment. And that was a challenge to make those all mesh. But we, we worked hard and, and we've achieved that. That's fantastic. So I want to go back a little bit to um, talk a little bit more about the community engagement process. Mm -hmm. So for instance, give me an example of, of something that a community-based group might have said to you that informed a current exhibit. Well, one of my favorite experiences was about a year ago, we did something called an open forum and we invited everybody in the community to come in to tell their stories. We know the stories of the famous folks in history or the stories that are told in the textbooks, 
but we wanted to know what your story was or what your neighbor's story was. So we threw open the doors, we had an open house, and literally hundreds of people came. They left their stories with us, we captured their stories on video, and we've incorporated them into a tower here at the museum where if you go in, you will see hundreds of faces out of a library of thousands, which we will update. Where you touch a button, you see a face, you push on it, the face comes alive, the story gets told, and we get to hear history from the perspective of the people who lived it in their everyday lives. And boy, did we discover things about what Seattle means to people, about what Se where Seattle you know, really challenges people, things we need to do that our history maybe wasn't so great. Yeah. Um, yeah. All of those things, it's a new way of looking at history from the ground up. That's amazing. So you all took the time, I, I, and I'm, I'm really hammering in on this because I think people talk about the Seattle way, mm -hmm. you know, that whole process, but this is an example for me of how that process really, really works well. So let's talk about all the things that are here that I know got pulled out of storage. <laughs> <laughs> because you, had, you were keeping how much storage space we when you were at the other location? Million artifacts and archives and photographs. I mean, just an endless amount of stuff. And such a small <laughs> fraction was ever on display. The new museum gave us a chance to go into that collection and really rediscover what was there. So we have artifacts now that go back thousands of years related to the Duwamish people. What? Who, this was their home, this very site. And we have artifacts that go back for generations to things that are brand new from the tech world that Seattle's created over the last few decades. Most of these have never been seen before, but at the same time, we have some of our old favorites. The very first plane that Boeing ever made. Uh, is here? Is here. It's right out there. Oh, wow. Um, remember the- Oh, that's it hanging out That's there. it hanging out. We'll take out. a look at that. Okay. <laughs> I see it. Remember the slow motion for that great- Yes, so you're yes, yes, Seattle. yeah, hydroplane. Okay. Yeah, the hydroplane. yeah, yeah. People love it. We restored it. We brought it back. But we have things that people have never seen before, things from Bill Gates' personal diary where he talks about setting up his company as a young man. What? We have the rosary beads of Princess Angeline, who was the daughter of Chief Seattle. Um, we have artifacts from the general strike of 1919 when the whole city closed down because they thought working conditions were unfair. Things that have never been seen before that really tell us our history. And then lots and lots of oral histories. That's cool. I heard um, there was a group of kids, and I see there, it's just teeming it's with kids. kids. And I mean kids of all ages and sizes. But I was uh, um, overhearing one of them tell, retell the story of the Seattle fire. So there's a lot of interactive displays happening here. And the Seattle well. fire story, which we all think we know pretty well, mm -hmm. we've told it in a completely different way. We have actual artifacts from the fire, things that were burned. Um, papers that were singed, plates that were melted together, and we let those artifacts actually tell the story. This sounds kind of crazy, but we've actually created a musical theater mm -hmm. that tells the story of the Great Seattle Fire. And I will say no more than that, except that it is incredibly fun, and it allows you to It has a bouncing ball, it right? It has a bouncing ball so you can <laughs> sing along. It's but so really, cool. at the end of the day, what it does is it gets you excited about that history story in a whole new way that you actually remember when you walk out the museum. What's the first thing you do when you come to work every day? What's the first thing you look at? You know what I look at? What? I look up at that great atrium. It's 65 feet tall. I look around and I see all these magical artifacts that are out, and before anyone comes in the museum, I feel so excited because this is Seattle's history. Wow. And you know what? It's our history. And you're a steward. I mean, you get to be one of the primary stewards of this amazing history. And whether it was Seattle or it's Tacoma, it doesn't matter. It is the history. And that has to be an enormous uh, amount of responsibility, but also give you a great deal of just pride. It's a lot of pride. It is a lot of responsibility because if we don't save this history, if we more importantly don't learn from it, we all know it's a cliche but it's so true, we will make mistakes. We have so much to learn. History is an empowering tool and that's our responsibility is to make sure that all those kids you see out there see themselves in the story of this community so that when they go out they understand that the future of this community is in their hands. They're writing the next chapter of our history. That is a big responsibility, and it starts with saving those artifacts that tell us the story in a way that nothing else does. And allowing them to be a part of telling that story, I think, Absolutely. is really equally important. You know, the last thing in the museum the kids can do is after they've learned about all these great stories over the last few centuries, they have a chance to write their own history book electronically 
that projects the next 50 years of Seattle history. Wow. What will be the story of this town when they grow up? And so we've collected now a digital library of short history books written by our young visitors that are lessons back to us from the new generation that's going to be our future. And then how will that get used? That becomes part of our digital library and then we disseminate it to schools and to other visitors and visitors can check other visitors' books. That's interesting. When I say book, very, very short, but it's yeah. a little message to us from the very youngest generation. That's a, um, um, an interesting thing because I know we just celebrated the 50th anniversary of the World's Fair and so this yeah. is really the next 50 yeah. uh, generation. What are you hoping will this, this, this museum will look like or be like over the course of the next 50 years? Wow, I, what I, a great I, I question. I know you <laughs> have to retire at some point. <laughs> I might retire by then, uh, but you know what? It's all going to be about change. If we recognize anything in this museum in 50 years in terms of the experiences, we probably won't have lived up to our potential. But what we will recognize is that those important artifacts that are brand new right now will be just as important in 50 years, even more so. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that the artifacts and the stories and the um, objects that we've saved are still preserved. But how we share those experiences should always evolve with each new generation. Right now we're developing lots of interactive experiences, but in 50 years there'll be other ways of sharing mm -hmm. information. The History Museum has to stay absolutely current with how to share information, but always protecting those valuable treasures of the past. It's where those two things merge. That's what a History Museum That's is. That's beautiful. So you're not always backward looking. You're, ba you're staying preserving that history, but always going forward. We're That's the industry part of it, right? Absolutely. We're building on our history, but we're not bound by it. That's so cool. So I want to talk a little bit about um, the various exhibits. Mm -hmm. We're sitting in the Punctum Poetry um, Gallery, and I see a lot of work from one of my favorite organizations, Arts Corps. I know you love it, <laughs> and the reason you love it is it's young people yeah. who've had interesting experiences in their lives, yeah. and they have a chance now to engage with the broader community. They spent several semesters in their high school learning Seattle history from museum educators. And then they reflected on that history through the lens of their own experience in spoken word, in poetry, in performance art. And we've incorporated some of that in this exhibit, which really lets young people share their response to Seattle's story mm -hmm. and really give us some insights into their own experiences. I'll tell you, until you hear a young person talk about history, you don't really know history it's because true. it's, as you know, it's unbelievable. It's true. That's what I love about rap music. See, yep. it gets such a bad rap, but I honestly believe that if you listen to these, many of these are lyrics Absolutely. in so many ways. Yep. So it's, it's just amazing. I also know that um, Arts Corps is going to be doing a special event here. So talk a little bit about that element of the museum that's available for special events. Well, too. when we started the museum, we thought we wanted it to be a community gathering place. Yeah. And almost every day, something really exciting is happening in our grand atrium or here in the galleries or out on our deck, which is a chance for the community to come together. Arts Corps is one example, but we've had everybody from City Club to the Seattle Rotary to the Anti-Defamation League just mm -hmm. last night. Mm -hmm. Coming to Mohai to have events, to have programs, to share stories, because I think they know that when you're surrounded by our history, it really enriches the conversation. Yeah. It reminds us yeah. both of what is good, but it also reminds us of what can be better. How to change. How to change. Yeah. You said that earlier, it's all about change. Mm -hmm. So when a person comes here for the very first time, what are the three things that you recommend they absolutely must see? If I have an hour to spend here. And most people <laughs> discover that when they're leaving, I'm going to come back because you yeah. need like a couple hours. But let's yeah. say you have even less than an hour. Yeah. The first thing I'm going to say has nothing to do with history necessarily because it's brand new. It's this amazing public artwork by the artist John Grady. And actually, both the city of Seattle and Four Culture helped us make this happen. There is a 65-foot sculpture crafted from the salvaged timbers of the historic schooner, the Wawona. It's been reshaped and refashioned into this soaring tower that you can actually walk into. And if you look down, you see Lake Union because this building is actually standing on the lake and the sculpture goes into the water. And if you look up, you see the sky. And John reminds us with the sculpture that history connects us to place, but it's always changing. Wow. This was once a ship. Now, 100 years later, it's this beautiful soaring sculpture. 
our own lives are changing, our community is changing. So go see the sculpture. It's called Wawona by John Grady. And then get to the second floor for the core exhibit. We call it the Northwest Story. Um, and it gives you a chance to see this community from wilderness to world city. It's an amazing, amazing experience. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing I would say is visit the Walker Gallery, our temporary exhibit gallery for our first temporary exhibit, which is called Celluloid Seattle. Mm. It's all about the history of film and television right here in Seattle. It's everything from Tugboat Annie all the way up to Sleepless in Seattle and Hump Day and oral histories with Lynn Sheldon and some of our local celebrities. Uh, lots of clips that go all the way back to the 1930s. Uh, Frazier's living room set. Wow, it's a, it's a lot really? of fun. That's it's here? a lot of fun. That's here. Okay, I have to you see, see that. You got to see that. So those are three things. So I have to trump you on that because yeah. I did like a quick run through, yeah. and there yeah. were a couple of things that I loved. JP Patches, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> his jacket. Yep. Uh, the AYP exhibit is still, yep. you know, a little piece of that is still there. And then you've got this piece on jazz music, where Floyd Stander for oh, Ernestine cool. Anderson, you know, uh, Jeb Award, all of those folks are there. And what that means to me is that the Museum of History and, and Industry is really a place for everybody's Everybody. history, yep. a place where it resides. You know, Vivian, when we were thinking about how do we tell the stories of Seattle after World War II, where so many of the history makers are still living, we spent two years pulling together literally hundreds of people from culture, from politics, from science, from business, from community activism, to have them tell us what really happened. So you can hear Larry Gossett <laughs> talk about that. how only Larry Gossett can talk. Yeah. And you can explore how uh, business leaders responded to the changes after World War II. Or you can dive into our cultural richness, including jazz in Seattle, which is a well-known story to those of us who love it, but right. a hidden story to right. people who don't know about it. Right. All those stories, there's so many more, are, are here, and it's a chance to kind of take a peek, you know, peel, peel the onion back a little bit and see how rich this community has been. <laughs> It's been incredible. It has. It yep. really has been. So um, just quickly, you know, this might be a, uh, a, a question that you can't answer or doesn't make any sense. But if I have an idea for an exhibit, mm -hmm. how do I approach that? How do I approach that with the, with the museum? If I say, you know what, there's a piece of history in my backyard and I want you to tell it, how does that happen? You know what? We have something for that. The gallery that we are sitting in, where Arts Corps is sharing some of their experiences uh -huh. right now is what we call a community gallery. It's the Linda and Ted Johnson Family Community Gallery. Every year, several times a year, this gallery will be a chance to share stories from the community yeah. that haven't been told before, that have no other venue. Nice. So coming up, we are working with a whole bunch of groups. The next exhibit is going to be presented by the Floating Home Association. Fantastic. They're not a museum group, but they've got a great story to share. So this summer, we're going to tell the stories of floating homes. After that, the gay and lesbian community is coming in I here to it. tell the story of that community in Seattle over the last few decades. And after that, we have a story sharing the experiences of Jewish merchants in Seattle. They're not stories that we initiated. They're stories that are out there. You probably have a story, Vivian. So You know, I have a lot of stories. I know you do. So someday, <laughs> the Vivian <laughs> story is going to be told do here. Do not encourage me. Uh, okay. <laughs> but what we want people to do is to recognize that there's those opportunities here to just go on our website, That's connect true. with Mohai through our information um, option, and we'll get you into the process. And if there's a good story to tell and we have an opportunity to work together, we'll make it happen. That is fabulous. I mean, you really are making this a place for a, a community gathering and for change to happen and people to see themselves here. I personally want to say thank you so very much for everything that you've done, everything you all are doing to make that history relevant and resonant. I love well, it. Well, thank you. And you know what? It is a huge community effort. I, yeah. I said a long time ago when we first talked, yeah. even before our interview, but yeah. way back when, that Mohai wasn't going to be successful if it just carried itself down to Lake Union. It had to be carried on the shoulders of the community, and the community showed up. They did the heavy lifting. They carried it. King County, for culture, hugely important yeah. to the success of this project. And it really has been a community effort. So we're humbled at Mohai to receive that support, and we're so excited to be working with everybody. Well, I'm ready to go see a couple of exhibits. So you're going to take me and show me a couple of things? I'd love to. Cool. Thank okay. you, Leonard. Thanks, Vivian. You're